a lot of people wonder why with Dolby Atmos music, why is there this loudness limit? Why do we have to stick to neg 18 luffs? Is it so that everything plays back at the same volume? You know, having everything play back at the same volume through a streaming service, I mean, that's nice to have. And if it happens because of this limit, that's a nice side effect. But that's not actually why we have this limit. And the reason we have this loudness limit is very, very simple. With Dolby Atmos, we can have up to 128 objects. And you can think of that in terms of this, just think of it as up to 128 different tracks of audio. All of those tracks need to fold down to a smaller format. In this case, the format we're probably most concerned about being able to fold down to okay is stereo. That's probably as small as we're going to get. Maybe some people would take it to mono, but stereo is really the one to think about. So I printed a stereo fold down of an Atmos mix that I did, and the mix was done to spec, and I've brought it back into Pro Tools, and I have a meter here on it, and I just want you to watch the meter on this and what happens. You see that right there, that neg 0.8? Neg 0.8, this mix, as it stands, folded down, I'm popping right up against digital zero. I am just about there because I'm folding down the Atmos to stereo. If our loudness limit for Atmos was higher, this would peak when it plays back. Now, some of you are probably wondering, well, why don't you just put a limiter on that? Aren't you going to limit the stereo version? If it was a stereo version and I was mastering this for distribution, yeah, I would use a limiter. I'd probably want to get the level up a little bit and kind of get a little more compression and make it a little denser from limiting it. But this isn't the stereo version. This is the Atmos fold down. This is a representation of what will happen to this Atmos mix when it gets played back in a consumer device and that consumer device folds it down to stereo. In this case, this is pushing right up against the digital limit of that device. So a lot of those devices, they probably have some kind of limiter in there. And the limiter that's going to be in that, it's not going to be great. I mean, it's a consumer device. And I don't have any control over that limiter. Whereas if it was a stereo mastering job, I can control the limiter. I'm going to dial it in. In this case, I don't want my mix to hit a limiter when it folds down to stereo. I just want it to fold down and to work. So that's why we have this loudness limit for Atmos at neg 18. If it was higher when we fold down or crash down the Atmos mix to stereo, we would potentially be running into distortion on a consumer device or a not so great limiter. And as a benefit, we actually have a little more dynamic range available for our Atmos mixes because of having that kind of lower limit than what a lot of us have been used to with stereo. So don't worry about the neg 18 limit. It's there so that our mixes play back well and sound good. And honestly, most mixes, they're probably going to sound better at that lower level than if you kind of squashed them and mastered them. And hey, you know, if you want that aesthetic that comes from hammering a limiter, you can still do that and just keep it at neg 18. So there you go. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.